Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning class. Okay, so today we will continue our lesson on introductions to scientific programming. So today we will learn on chapter 10, which is all about data analysis. So how you wanted to analyze your data that you have in engineering problems. So let's continue. Alright, so these are the objective for today's lesson. So after studying this chapter, you should be able to. The first objective is to understand and use basic statistical MATLAB functions. And the second objective is for you to understand and use the MATLAB sort functions. Okay, so in this chapter, you will learn um, actually uh, several statistical uh, MATLAB functions to analyze your data. And also at the end of this chapter, you will also learn about the sort function inside MATLAB. All right. Okay, let's take a look at the first part of today's lesson, which is all about basic statistical analysis. Okay, so statistical analysis functions. So below are some of the basic statistical analysis function available in MATLAB. So uh, when you will learn uh, about a statistics uh, subject later on in, uh, I think in second or third years during your studies, okay? So you will learn again about max, mean, median, mean, mode, STD, standard deviation or VAR, which is variance, okay? So these are some of the basic statistical analysis which are available in MATLAB, okay? So you actually can compute a maximum value, and you can also find the mean of the uh, data, the median, the smallest value, which is the minimum, the mode, the most frequent value, the standard deviation, and also the variance. Okay, so you can find all of these values by using MATLAB. So how we want to do it? Let's continue our lesson. Okay, column-oriented data sets. So in MATLAB, data sets in a matrix are stored in column-oriented by default. Hence, in most MATLAB functions, operation on column-oriented data set does not require additional input. Okay, for example, let's take a look at example number one. Okay, so example number one, we initialize a variable X with a total of three rows and two columns. Okay, so what does it mean by column-oriented data set is that MATLAB initialize a one data set uh, representing one column. So it means that this is the first data set and this is the second data set. So the number of data set is equal to the number of the column inside matrix in MATLAB. Okay. So you see here we have two column. It means that two data set. This is data set number one and this is data set number two. All right. So what we wanted to do here is that if we wanted to um, do some uh, statistical analysis, so in this example, we are doing mean, okay? We are doing the mean function, okay? We just, we just can do mean in the bracket of x, which is the variable that we wanted to find mean with, okay? So in default, by default, MATLAB will find the mean of uh, each and every uh, column, okay? So this is the mean for column 1 and this is the mean for column 2. Okay, so computing average value on column-oriented matrix does not require second input. Okay, so if you wanted to compute the mean or any statistical analysis in MATLAB by different column, you don't have to put the second input. Okay, what does it mean by second input is that there are something beside x here. Okay, so let's take a look at the second example. Okay. So the second example shows that we are we are writing the mean. Okay, we wanted to find the mean of the matrix X, and then we have the second input here, which is number two. Okay, so this second input it symbolizes if we wanted to find the mean of the input X. Okay, by row. Okay, you can see here that. This uh, default value mean x only find the mean of the uh, value of uh, of the data x in each column. But if you wanted to find the mean in each row, okay, this one row two and row three, we must put two here, okay. It is called the second input. 
All right. So computing average values on row-oriented metrics require the second input to be set equals to 2. Okay, so you must know and you must remember if you wanted to compute the mean or any data analysis in MATLAB, if you want it to be uh, column-oriented like this, you just put the value or the variables. Okay, but if you wanted to compute your statistical analysis in row base, you must put an additional input, which is number 2 here. All right. Okay, next example, which is example number two, operation for the entire matrix. Okay, so for the, this time, if you wanted to compute what we call the statistical analysis, okay, for the entire matrix, so it is not column-oriented or row-oriented. So you can either use column operator or perform the function twice. Okay, so the first uh, method that you can use is you can use column operator. So it means that mean of variable x Okay, so if you wanted to choose all of the values, you can just put bracket and colon here. Okay, you already learned this colon operator in the previous uh, chapter, right? So if you wanted to select all of the variables, in, select all of the data inside the variables, you must put a, a colon here. So it means that it is everything. You want to find the mean of everything, the data stored inside variable x. Okay, so it will only give one answer. All right. So you can also do the second option where you need to repeat the function twice. Okay, so as you can uh, remember from the previous slide, generally the stat statistical analysis in MATLAB it will compute the uh, operation in column based. Okay, and then when you do the statistical analysis again, so it will compute again the statistical analysis and it will come out with only one value so it will select all of the data that you have okay so you have two options either you wanted to use colon operator or you are repeating the similar statistical analysis twice okay all right so okay so the colon operator converts matrix into a column vector operation on vector does not require the second input Okay, and performing the function twice will first compute column-oriented data that return a vector. So then the operation is done to the vector that return a scalar. All right. So this is uh, the description for the uh, explanation that I've done to you. All right. Okay. So next we will take a look at the data sorting. So what is actually data sorting and how we want it to sort the data inside MATLAB. All right, so in MATLAB, in order for you to sort the data, what you should do is you should put a syntax of B and I, which is the output that you can get from this sort uh, function. And then you have a sort, which is the function A, dimensional, and also the, the direction. All right, so this is the description of the syntax, okay? So first, you have A, okay? You have A here. A is the data to be sorted. Okay, so A is the name of the variable that you wanted to sort its data inside. So dim is actually the dimension to operate along. Okay, one for column oriented or two for row oriented. Okay, so if you wanted to perform a column oriented, you must um, put the number one inside the uh, inside this kind of functions. Okay. So if you want to your function to become row oriented, you must put number two. Okay, so it is similar with the previous um, st uh, kinds of uh, statistical analysis. So if you want your statistical analysis to be column based, you must put one. Or you 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 are not putting any value. So it is by default column oriented. And if you want your functions or your uh, statistical analysis to be row oriented, you must put the second value, which is number. Two. All right. So next is the direction. So if we are sorting something, right? So usually we are sorting something in increasing or in decreasing. Okay. So the sorting direction you must put ascend as a default. Okay. So if you want your input to be increasing, you don't have to put anything in the direction. Okay. But if you want your sorting direction to become uh, decreasing or descend, so you must put descend inside the direction here. Okay, so in terms of output, okay, you see here we have output of B and output of I. 
output of B symbolize sorted data, which is the data that has been sorted. And I symbolize the sorting index. So it means that the first index will be equal to number one. Okay. So if you choose ascent, it means that the first index is the lowest data value. Okay. So if you choose descent, so the first index, so the index number one will symbolize the highest uh, value, highest value inside your variable or inside the data that you want it to be sorted. All right. Okay. So let's take a look at example number three. So in this example, we are initializing a data called X with uh, a value. The data that it starts is six, three, seven, two, and eight. Okay. And then we wanted to sort the data. Okay, so we are using the sort function. Okay, right now we are using the sort and x. So it will sort the data x and it will start in y. Okay, so in default, by default, it will start, uh, it will start the data in ascending. So it means that the data will come from the small value and it will go up until the highest value. Okay, all right. So the next part of the example is we are initializing the variable x okay with a matrix size of 2 by 3 okay so if we wanted to sort the data okay as i as i've been mentioned to you before all right so by default in statistical analysis it will sort the data by column if we doesn't give any second uh, input to the uh, functions and it also will compute the uh, sorting operation in ascending order if we doesn't have if we doesn't initialize it uh, the order for example the descending so if we doesn't initialize it it will automatically become ascending so it means that the data will be increasing okay so you see here this is the second example all right okay so in this example we are using sort x of the matrix of two by three okay so it will automatically sort the data okay ascending order by column okay so this is the first column this is the second column and this is the third column so you can see that the data is ascending okay so the data is increasing 3 to 6 2 to 5 2 to 7 all right okay and next if you wanted to sort the data also ascending order but we want it to sort the data row by row what we should do is as usual we need to put the second input here okay you need to put the number two here and it will automatically sort the data in ascending order row by row okay you see here two to three to five it is increasing two to six to seven it is increasing okay so it will do the operation row by row all right okay so next is example number four so example number four shows that um, if you wanted to control your sorting order so if you want your sorting to be increasing you don't have to put anything okay but if you want your sorting to be descending or decreasing you need to put the direction here okay so this is the what you call the general term okay stop at it doesn't matter it will do increasingly in column order okay and the next one it will do descent okay it will start from the higher value and then it will goes lower lower and lower okay but it still compute in column order okay column type okay six to three five to two seven to two okay but as usual if you wanted your data to be sorting um row by row what you should do is you should put the second input okay sort x and then you put number two here okay and it will automatically sort based on the rows okay and then the descent descent is the direction for your sorting okay so it will sort the value row by row okay in descending order five three two the value is decreasing seven six two the value is also increasing row by row because you put number two here all right okay so this is the example number five for sort index okay so the example asks you to given below are the temperature values for nine consecutive days at a city so find the two highest and two lowest temperature values also find which day this highest and lowest value occur 
Okay, so X is actually the temperature for nine consecutive day at a city. Okay, so find the two highest and two lowest temperature values. It can be easily done by using sort function twice. Okay, first with descending order and then ascending order. So you can just easily do it. Okay, by using sort function twice. You need to do it twice because the first function is ascending because you want it to find the minimum value, and the second sort function is descending because you want it to find the highest value. Day, although not explicitly defined by any vector from the problem, because this problem doesn't mention 19 degrees Celsius at which day. So, the second output argument for sort function can be used to find the respective two highest and two lowest temperature. Okay, so if uh, the question doesn't ask you or, or doesn't mention any uh, day or any index, so it will automatically become the first index. So it means that. 19 degrees Celsius will become the first day, 20 is the second day, and 23 is the ninth day. Okay, so you can uh, assume that 23 is the ninth day and 19 is the first day. All right, so the data that you can get, which is the indexing, you can get from the sort function. All right, okay, so next below is the MATLAB code for example number six. Okay, so first, what we should do is we should initialize the variable x with contains the temperature 19 20 18 so you must uh, input the correct temperature all right and then you must put this square bracket okay and then x sort ascending index of ascending x sort descending and index of descending okay so when you take a look at the okay this is the the syntax b will start the sorted data which is the data inside the variable okay which, which has been sorted okay i is actually the sort index so it means that by default okay this is the first second the third the fourth the fifth the sixth the seventh the eighth and the ninth okay and then after all of this data has been sorted the index also has been sorted for example if we are initializing the descending order so 25 will move forward okay so in value 25 it stores the index number seven so index number seven will become forward okay so seven one 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 until it reach the lowest value here so the value will be sorted uh, uh, and it will bring its index also so it will also bring its index okay the index will not change for each data okay it will it will be fixed okay so when the data has been sorted the index is sorted also okay so it will also be sorted all right so you see here that so x sort ascending it means that the data and i is the index okay so x and this is the similar this is the the data that has been sorted and also the index okay that belongs to the data previously Okay, so this one, we are using the descending because the default is ascending. But if you want our data to be descending, we need to put descend here. All right. So this is basically uh, what we wanted to show is that uh, because the question asks you to only show the first two. Okay, so we can just uh, initialize one variable here and it gets the data from this. Okay, this uh, sorted data from one until two only because n here equals two, similar to the index here. Okay, we, we we can just get the data from index here, and we rename the variable as day low. Okay, and then n equals to two. So we just get the index of the first two. Okay, the first two, the first two lowest temperature, and then then and then it goes to the high temperature. What are the higher the highest temperature the highest two? Okay, because it, we will get the data from the index number one and the index number n okay and also the day high what 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 is the day of the uh, situation where the temperature is the highest okay all right so you, if you run this code okay you will get the answer highest two is okay the temperature went 25 and 24 degrees when it uh, happening it happening on day seven and day eight lowest two the temperature is 17 and 18 when is the day? So it is on day four and day three. Okay. So the number of the day and temperature is actually connected to each other. 
because 25 and 7 is actually stored inside this one exot and indexing okay so you must know how to do this kind of indexing because later on when you are given a questions you want to sort the data and you want to know what are the index so you must do this kind of functions okay you must have a square bracket and two variables here the first variable is representing your data and the second variable representing the index which belongs to the data before you sort the data okay not after all right okay so example i think this is the final example for this chapter okay so outliers so outliers are values in a set of data that are considered to have significant dissimilarity compared to the rest of the data so one approach to detect the to detect the dissimilarity is by checking statistical values of the data set so basically outlier is like a data which has a value which is um, very far from the average value okay so when you have an average data okay and then suddenly you have um, a data which is so far away from your average value so it is called the outliers okay so below is an example of an algorithm to remove n number of outliers from a data set okay start input data so this is the pseudocode okay so first you must compute the difference between the data and its average so each we we the first part of the uh, outliers if we wanted to remove the outliers we must uh, compute the differences okay what are the, the average data that we get here and then what are the differences of each data okay we wanted to know the differences so if the differences is higher it means that the data is actually outliers so we must remove it all right so we must sorting the descending the data d and call it d sort okay and also find the corresponding sort index so the sort index is, is, is very very important for you because you wanted to remove the data so you need the index okay and then get the first n elements of iso and call it in and remove the outlier of data according to the index okay so if you wanted to remove the data you must know what are the index okay so if you doesn't know what are the index of the outliers you cannot remove the data of, of course okay and then the output is actually the data which is the clean data and end okay and then the example asks you to write a MATLAB function for the above pseudocode all right so this is actually the function okay for the MATLAB code all right so the function data okay the output of the data or the, output is, the, the output that you get is data and then the remove outliers okay this is the name of of the function the input of data and also the end which is the number of data that you wanted to remove okay okay this one is a d equals to absolute data minus mean okay we wanted to find the difference between the uh, data each data and also the mean of all of the data okay and then this is the sorting and then this is the indexing and then this is the removing so if you wanted to remove uh, some of the index uh, remove the data you must put only the square bracket of the index okay the index of the data that you wanted to remove all right okay so you can see is that uh, first for outliers uh, example okay first we initialize a data called x okay so you can see here we have two three six one zero three four one one four nine three one two two Okay, so you can from here you can see that um, if you wanted to uh, in general okay we can see that the standard or the average is like two three three four one one four three one two so it's like zero one two three four okay the average value is among that value okay and you can see here the value of nine and six is so far away right because actually the the the, the gap is at four only five we doesn't have any five values here we doesn't have any six value seven eight okay oh, six value we have one okay but we doesn't have any five values we have one six value and one nine values so those kind of value is called the outliers okay so you can see here this is the function that we call remove outliers okay so right now we wanted to remove one outliers okay so actually when we you are calculating the average of this value okay you can find maybe this value is like a two point something or three point something the average i'm not i'm not i'm you can calculate it by yourself okay and then from here is that we wanted to find if we wanted to remove only one values this is actually the values which are so far away from all of these values so it means that the number nine will be removed from the 
data x okay so you can see here there are no number nine because number nine is the most uh, difference okay number nine has the most difference between the mean and also the data data nine itself all right and then the second one is we want we wanted to remove the outliers of uh, we want to remove two outliers okay so the two outliers here today is that we have nine and also we have six okay six and nine are the two outliers that has been removed okay you can see here because the data is come from zero one two and three and four okay so the the mean will become uh, in that kind of area okay therefore number six and number nine is already far away from the mean so it will be removed okay so this is how you wanted to remove the outliers which is the actually the if you wanted to smoothen your data you, you need to remove the outliers all right okay so i think that's all for today's class so as usual if you have any questions you can just uh, ask me in the whatsapp and i will answer you accordingly okay so i think that's all for today's class and thank you for listening okay assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh